Hi guys, how you doing? I hope you can hear me okay. I'm having to speak a little bit quietly tonight because um, it is half past midnight. My daughter's asleep next door. Uh, my son has just gone to bed and uh, the wife has gone out to the karaoke. So I've got maybe an hour, two hours to um, try and get some video footage recorded. But I just have to be a little bit quiet because it is half past midnight. Now in the last episode, I'm sorry, I forgot, I some I turned off the mouse pointer on the screen. So when I was showing you loads of stuff, you probably didn't see it, but hopefully um, you can figure out what I was trying to say. But let's press on. I, I'm really enjoying this game. Whoa. Okay, here we are. So, uh, let me just re-familiarise myself with what we've done so far. Um, I'm surprised I don't have a torch. Is there a way to turn the torch on and off? I don't know. Uh, is it because we're paused? No, we're not paused. Okay, we've got an alert here. No holding points exist. Aircraft cannot taxi to and from the runway. Right click on a taxiway node. Close. Right click on a taxiway node. Close to the runway. Close to the runway. To set a holding point. Okay. That confused me for a minute. Um, no ATC tower. Oh, okay. Right. So two important things we need to build. Let's focus on this now. Uh, so if we come in here to infrastructure, taxiway node, and yeah, this is this is a grass runway. Can you see that? That is a grass runway, um, and the runway is not open. So let's put a right click here, holding point, click twice. No. Nope. Ah, there we go. Now it says click twice to rotate, but I haven't figured out what the heck that means, to be honest with you. So I don't know how to rotate it, but it seems to rotate itself the correct way. So no real issue anyway. Right, so we've got two holding points. Um, and incidentally, just whilst I'm thinking about it, I think that's what Sim Airport is missing. It doesn't have any holding points. It's just a free-for-all. Whoever gets on the runway first can go. And I think that's why it gets all confused. So maybe they'll see this and go, oh, yeah. And then they'll fix that little problem. Right. Um... Okay, so this is built now. I think we're going to upgrade this to... Asphalt is very expensive. We're going to do it. Pappy lights. Yes, we need pappy lights. Now, the first time I put these down, I put them in facing the wrong way. So I'm just going to make sure that I don't do that again. There we go. Something like that. That's pretty much close enough. Um, general aviation and commercial. Yes. So the, I like these pop-up menus. They're very good. Let's open the runway. Um, what we need to do is put an ATC tower in so that we can have flights coming in. I do hope you guys can hear me okay. Uh, I won't know until after the video, so... Small ATC. That's not that small, is it? Let's just rotate that. By the way, you rotate with the R key, in case you were wondering. Let's plonk the, uh, the ATC smack bang in the middle of the runway. That seems to be a fairly logical location. And let's just check as well that uh, we haven't got any security yet. We don't have baggage handling. Ramp agent service round disabled. Ramp agent service round. I have no idea what that means. Um, 
so yes okay um, just distracted myself sorry the fuel elements here I think they're required in order for you to get jets in but I've yet to actually successfully have a jet land at my airport general aircraft are pretty easy going um, all right how many people do we have on site 20 so where the heck are they I saw one there's one like little ants just a little box <laughs> running up there okay he's putting the pappy lights in good stuff right that's that done you don't have to put lights on them I think they come with the lights by default so uh, that's good that's one good thing and we are pretty much ready to go here um, and my thinking is that if we just get to a point where general aircraft is coming in and perhaps parking up then that will bring in a bit of revenue and um, that's something we definitely need. I've sort of got an email here, let's just check this out. Construction tutorial step six. Oh, and another spam email, we'll just delete that. Okay, so regarding these tutorials, I'm not actually going to follow them per se, but I am going to actively use them. Oh look, we've got buses turning up. What was that? There's nobody there. That's weird. I'm looking forward to seeing this working. Um, sorry, I do get distracted very easily. I am... That's a turquoise bus. I haven't seen a turquoise bus before. Nobody on it again. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to follow these per se, but I am going to keep track on them and just see where we are. So, for example, construction. We've already, already up to step six which is adding security in queues which incidentally is what I'm planning on doing next so let's have a little think about how we're going to do this now at some point have I opened have I opened the airport just quickly yes I have opened the airport I'm getting alerts coming in yeah that can go um ah look at this we have airplanes we have three general aircraft aircraft er, er, <laughs> three general aircraft airplanes already landed so that is a bit of money coming in 25 dollars for every 10 15 minutes or something and we can watch our first plane take off look at that they model the flaps oh it's moving far too quickly to tell but that was a Cessna in fact oh there's another one there that one's just landed so when you click on it this is what I was just saying to you before about the the amount of detail um, that it provides is really quite extensive so this has come from Churchill International no, that's, that's us. I do apologise. Uh, so it's going to leave us, Churchill International, WCH at London, United Kingdom in Europe. And it's going to fly to Norwich International Airport, NWI in Norwich, United Kingdom, Europe. So, cool. Um, what's this? I'm not sure what that means. It landed at 11.32. It's going to stay here for two hours and eight minutes. It's going to depart at 13.40 and uh, yeah, it's just a one-off. A Cessna 182, perfect, 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 perfect. Now, if I click on the gate that he's currently parked at, let's try that one because he's not moving. You see, we've got all this information over here. Now, I haven't really got into any of that yet, so I can't tell you too much about it, but you can see the amount of detail that's provided. Repairs, $400, or is that the stand? They're not called gates, they're called stands. I do apologise. I've got a light, that, a dodgy light that comes on and off whenever it bloody chooses, so apologies for that. Okay, right, so that's good. I mean, we've got some money coming in, it's quite busy 
uh, we're literally one in one out so hopefully that's going to keep us afloat um, I was looking to spend half of our million and then try and get back up to a million so maybe we can just put a few more gates in across sort of across here and across here these are only small gates so at some point we're going to want larger gates but that will will require expanding all this out and probably I'll do that this side so maybe we'll just expand the gates across here because these GA aircraft don't need to be attached to the building you see how I've got these attached to the building that's because we want to entice some commercial flights to come in here so um, that has to be attached to the building in order for that to work let's go ahead and put a I think it's a boarding desk check-in desk info desk okay so that's for the front so it must be a boarding desk that looks pretty good to me and I'd say something like that that's annoying it's not the same width as the door what do these arrows represent is there any information one, one thing I, one little thing that does bother me with this uh, oh it's not going to do it now um, sometimes I think if you've got it selected yeah actually okay forget that that's not a big issue I was going to say that the text is going over the other text and you can't read it but I think it's okay let's press on um, enables passengers to board their flights must be connected to a stand requires at least one airport staff to function must be connected manually to an aircraft stand to function isn't that the same thing must be connected to a stand must be connected manually to an aircraft stand to function okay pretty standard stuff so it's going to cost 2500 and operation costs a 10 pound a day or an hour I don't know so let's just pop these down boom 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 that's that done so they'll get built pretty quickly um, now we're not going to get any commercial flights I think until we have any customers no no passengers who's this no workmen workmen so yeah um i don't think we're going to get any commercial flights until we have completely sorted this area out so we're going to have to do that now let me see here let's put an information desk in Let's just see what an info desk does. Used by passengers to acquire information about the airport and flights. Requires at least one airport staff to function. Okay, so we need one of those. And we also need a check-in desk. So, how am I going to devise this? Let's press Z to bring up the secure zone so we can see what kind of areas we're working with. Uh, how big are these info desks? Oh, pretty flipping big, actually. I'm assuming where it says information is the front. Um, let's go... Okay, they're quite expensive at $3,000, but we'll go for two with the hope that as we expand... We won't have to s spend any additional cash uh, to make things work. What does a check-in desk look like? Oh, they're quite big. And there's arrows on this. Right, okay. So, I can't move the mouse to show you, but the, the center arrows, I think are the queue. Queues in this are quite cool actually, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and the other two bits are for luggage. So I need to think a little bit about 
what I'm going to do with luggage. That's a good point, actually. We're going to have to have an area here where luggage uh, can be collected. So, I'm thinking... I'm thinking we're going to go... Hmm... Hmm. It's a bit of a gamble this. I don't want to get it wrong because we're not too far off getting down to half a million. Let's just see if I've put that in the right way. Yeah, looks like it. That's cool. Do you know what I kind of like about this? The computers and the, the mice and stuff, they're randomly placed on the desk. They're not uniform. They're not all the same. That's quite cool. There is a slight issue there with the mouse on the right desk being on the keyboard and the other one is on top of the monitor. But I, I like it. I like it. Maybe they could just tidy that up a tad. Right, so information. Um, and then how many of these desks are we going to need? I don't know. Let's... I'm going I'm to gamble there. Why not? We're going to have to get some staff in a minute as well. Right, okay. And then what we're going to need, we're going to need a security exit. So this is so people can get back out of the uh, secure area. So that can just pop there, because this is where we're going to put our um, carousel eventually once we're not going to be looking at doing that straight away i don't think it's probably expensive um okay checking desk is there we're going to need a security checkpoint so that's ten thousand and that's five thousand they interestingly they cost the same amount the operation costs Ah, that one requires four security staff to function, and this requires just one. Let's see how big that is. Wow, that is big, isn't it? <sighs> okay, so if we go for the big one, it's twice the price, and we're going to have four times the amount of staff, so it's definitely going to be more expensive. But long term, is that going to work out to be the cheaper option? Because, uh, not forgetting, I don't think I've mentioned this actually, but the whole game runs in shifts as well. And every character, every employee that you have, has personality and so on. So if they're not happy, they might quit or not turn up for work or I don't know. So, um, there's a lot to consider. Now, if I put that too close to this thing, then I'm not going to be able to put any more in. So maybe we'll just pop this next to the info desk. Like that. I think we'll go for the big one. Okay, now watch this. Watch this for queues. This is quite smart, I think. If we click on this and say build a queue, let me just drag it. And then when we're happy, we click the button. That's it. A queue has been made. Which is pretty cool, I think. Okay, now I'm just wondering whether I've positioned that in a sensible way or not. We're going to have to have a wall. Actually, we don't have to have a wall. This is one of the things I was saying to you about how it's, it's kind of got some missing parts uh, in Limbo. So, for example, you know, you have to pass through security to get to the aeroplane. Um, you have to pass through security to get here, and you can see there's a bit of fence and whatnot. Or you could, I suppose, you could just wander, you know, wander in from from the forest. What's this? Accepting all general elevation at this moment. Yep. Oh, an email. We got an email. Uh, Okay, airside construction tutorial. Let's just have a quick look at that. What does it say? Uh, 
Uh, cool. Uh, step two, we have completed. Construct a runway, ATC tower, lay down taxi foundations, drag out taxiway pass, toggle holding points by right clicking on taxiway path, press T for visual guidance. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Let's just have a look at uh, contracts. Ahaha! I thought this might be the, the way it works. You'll notice that the um, the contractor contract has come back again. Um, it has changed, actually. It is a different contract. It's a different value, but we're still not interested. But here we have some actual uh, official aircraft. So let's have a look at this. Um, this is a contract between Stripe Air and Churchill International. It's annoying that it doesn't have enough characters to have international, but we'll move on. Seven light class flights requiring a small stand and one check-in desk each. So we haven't got seven, we've got three. So we that kind of contract is out the window already. What about this one? Wow. Um, Skylink. Skylink was founded in 2017, so they're very new, with the aim of being a luxurious airline, blah, 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 blah. Six light class flight requiring a small stand and one check-in desk. Oh my goodness. I'm a little bit concerned here. Six. So three is not enough. Three is not going to be enough. If we want commercial flights, we're going to have to double the size of our current terminal and that is not going to be cheap is it so that's 15 wide how much did this cost us i didn't i can't even remember 30 grand that's not as a as expensive as I thought it would be actually okay so we might be able to do this we might be able to get commercial flights in but we're gonna to have to get some more gates so how much are the gates I mean they're only grass gates so they can't be that expensive surely um, stands sorry there are any small stands one two three okay I'll hook that up to the taxiway node. We'll do the same thing as we did before. Because I quite like that implementation. Keeps it neat and tidy and organised. So we'll just let our builder dudes go ahead and, and get on with that. Um, and we'll, we'll just have to be patient about the commercial flights. We can't do that just yet. But we have made progress because I figured out how to get commercial flights. So that's something I didn't know how to do before this episode. So I'm quite happy that we've done that. Um, now, maybe today we can just finish this off so that it's functional. Um, or semi-functional. So yeah, as I was saying before I got completely sidetracked. You don't have to put walls or any kind of restriction in. Just the fact that that's a secure zone and this isn't appears to be enough to keep those two boundaries apart. Oh my gosh. I've never had one of these, by the way. So, build a queue. Oh, that's cool. You can kind of have it. I think we'll go like that. Oh, you can go multiple directions. Uh, I think that's good enough. I could have done like a wibbly wobbly one, I suppose, but uh, that'll do. I'm just thinking that probably people would like to sit down. Um, so let's sort of go ahead and get some kind of... Okay, we want to leave this area clear. So maybe we'll put this lot over here. No... 
So we're going to get we're going to run out of space really quickly. Maybe we'll just put it here by the security desk. So they've there's a little bit of seating area whilst they're waiting. That's fine. That'll do. Uh, trash can. Okay, let's put trash cans by the doors. Um, and maybe some plants either side. Just to keep that looking nice. And... I'm tempted to put another seat in there, but we'll leave that for now. I'm just wasting money where we don't need to. New email. What's this? Uh, spam. You can buy an upgrade, by the way, here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? If you go to economy, procurement. Oh, you need to get a procurement director in. Incidentally, one of the tutorials um, tells you you need to hire a functions manager or something but it actually means a procurement manager a uh, procurement director in fact that's called procurement director and if we go to committees oh it is called a procurement director <laughs> i think maybe they've changed the names or maybe i just imagined that but anyway uh, you need a procurement director so that you can start buying into these procurement uh items this is where you get like uh, document scanners uh, fuel that apparently we don't need for commercial flights which is cool cafeterias shops and baggage handling so I mean we're gonna get to all this stuff but first of all we just need a bit of profit coming in so that we can maintain the airport whilst we're building we've only got 54,000 left so really really up against it now I guess I guess it's time I get some staff in, isn't it? So we're gonna need airport staff. One. Look at the prices. Uh, let's just click on these. They've got um, sort of logic skills, pleasantness skills, technical skills, and ha how well they handle stress. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's really very detailed, this game, I have to say. But the prices, yesterday at least, were all over the place. Doesn't look like we have that many employees. Oh, there's a few. Okay. $5.30 an hour for airport staff. Uh, what have I just hired? I can't remember. So we've got two airport staff. So that's the info desk. Is there any way of dictating where they go to? Because if there isn't, I'm going to need four information, four staff just for this. And that's not clever. I may have just made a mistake. You can control their shifts as well. I haven't really looked into that yet. So we'll ignore that as much as possible. Airport staff, $9.70 an hour. She handles stress and she's very pleasant. She's not that smart and she's not very technical. Perfect. Oh look, they've moved over to that desk, which is weird. And they don't just appear either. They get on a bus. Um, here she comes. This is probably our new employee here actually, on this bus. I love the way this bus system is working. There she is. New employee, and she'll come and stand there. Lovely. Right, uh, security. Mm, doesn't handle stress that well. I don't know how relevant this is. Uh, Vladimir's pretty chilled out, but I'm not sure he's all that smart. Uh, airport staff, $10 an hour. Uh, airport staff, $7.30 an hour. She's really, really average. 
Security, $11.70. Pleasant handles stress, but not very logical. It's about their decision making, isn't it? You kind of need them to be a little bit smart. This is a good guy. Gevorg Sargison. I think, I don't know. So that's one security guy. We need three more. I think we're so short on options. Wow, she's smart. She's cool. She can come in. Uh, and we do need a janitor, actually. She's really smart. Wow, cool. So, security. Yes, smart. Security. Smart, but doesn't handle stress well. Sorry, Sean. That's not a good combination. Um, yeah, not that smart. I mean, I don't need them to be super, super smart, but... I mean, she's really pleasant, so... I think we'll go... We'll give her a try. And because sometimes you need a really pleasant person just to calm the situation down. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now I've lost track of what we've got here. Airport staff. One, two, three, four. Oh, crap. I need two more. Security. One, two, three, four. And one janitor. So we need two more airport staff, and that is us good. Oh no, we need these as well. Five more airport staff. Oh, we're just going to have to take anybody. We're so short on options. Um, oh gosh, there's none. Airport staff, take you. Because if we haven't got enough people, we just can't run the uh, airport there we go that should be enough now we'll grab you as well so we've got one over and you okay so we've got one security member more than we need and we've got one um, airport staff person more than we need as well so that is something fairly decent i'm actually going to do something here really quick if I'm quick enough. I'm going to cancel that. And cancel that. And I'm going to pop this here. Because we've just expanded this out. So we are now pretty good. As soon as I knock that wall down, we'll be okay. Let's open these gates up. Stands, sorry. Uh, open that for general aviation. We can't do commercial yet. General aviation. Open stand. Okay, so they're now open. I should have done that earlier because it could be making us some money. Can I turn these to commercial? Ah, they need a boarding desk, so let's do that. Uh, connect to stand. And that's how that's done. Just that little green line there connects the two. And now we should, theoretically, be able to open these up for commercial. Yay! That is so cool. I'm not sure what this blue line is all about. This stand is connected to a security checkpoint and can transfer passengers. That is awesome. Okay, commercial, fantastic. We are open for business, guys. Open for business. Now, I think I mentioned this in the last episode. Because there's no door, these guys are stuck. They now can't get in or out, so they can't fix this last little bit because, uh, because they can't get out. So let's get them to knock the wall down and that should then allow them to get back out of that room. So, yes, the airport has basically doubled in size way quicker than I was expecting it to. 
Um, and we've got six, what are these? Stands. Six stands already. Let's go have another quick look at these contracts and see if we're ready to take somebody on. There's another one as well, Maple. Seven, yeah, we can't do seven. We can do six. Six light class flights requiring a small stand and one check-in desk each. Almost finished doing that, yes. Six successful flights to complete. Payment per flight is 3,100, or we need to get on this. Contract must be completed within two days. The relationship between the airport and the airline is dependent on the successful execution of the contracted flights and therefore future contract proposals. Now, the important thing to note here is that whilst we've got GA aircraft coming in, um, they could basically take the stands up and then our contracted uh, um, flights won't be able to park and that would be bad. So what we're going to have to do, unbelievably, is add some more gates. We're still just above our 500,000 that I wanted to stay above. So let's just grab... This is actually dragging on a bit, isn't it? Sorry. Um, I'm going to pop three more down. Like that, because I don't think they're that expensive. How much does that cost? Twenty thousand. Far more expensive if you use concrete or or something like that. But this doesn't have to be connected to anything other than the uh, the uh, the taxiway. So it's a pretty cheap way of ensuring that GA aircraft can still land. So once they've built those three, we'll make these for commercial flights only and these three for GA and then we can sign that contract. And I think that will be today's episode completed. Uh, boarding desk. Must be placed inside a secure zone. Yes, of course. So let's also excellent that's going really rather well I don't know I don't know if it is let me know in the comments section if you think it's going well and if you've got any ideas and suggestions please do let me know because um, you know you, you guys are very smart and you're very switched on and you see stuff that I don't see because I'm too busy yapping away. I'm a bit concerned that there's no staff over here or here. Hang on, what have we got here? All right, this is where all our staff are. They just sat down doing nothing. Ah, one more thing I just want to add. Oh, toilets! We don't have any toilets. That's a bit of an oversight, isn't it? Goodness me, we're going to have to do something about that. Maybe we'll put the toilets in the secure area. Toilets are for paying customers only. Um, info board. Now, what are they called? You're not going to know. Um, it's not in items. Infrastructure? I could have sworn that there was like um, like a, a you know a flight information panel or something like that I could have sworn I put something like that in um, on day one when it first came out oh airport screens there we go Airport screens. Now, where should we... Let's whack that right there. Hmm. 
Yeah, is that going to get in the way of people trying to talk to Info, though? Maybe... We'll pop it. I don't know what to do with that, actually. Is it visible both sides? Oh, only one side. Okay. Okay, well, uh, let's pop it next to Info, then. Actually, do you know what? Oh gosh, stop pressing the wrong button. I'm going to get rid of this desk. How do I get rid of this desk? Info desk. Uh, yeah. We'll get rid of that and we'll put the info, de uh, the info board next to the info desk thing and we can always come back and rebuild that later but it's just the staff I want to release the staff are we having issues here it's like oh, it seems to be working okay that's good there we go so whilst you're there if you wouldn't mind just put the airport screens up that'd be great right let's get these done let's connect a stand Connect a stand. Connect a stand. Excellent. That is all done. Uh, let's get these open and general aviation only. Open general aviation only. Open general aviation only. Now we'll start closing these off for general aircraft. General, general Aviation Aircraft. Uh, and then when these guys go, we'll close these off as well. And then we'll sign that contract. And we should be good to go. So I think that's enough uh, for this episode, guys. Hopefully you're still enjoying it. And um, it's actually going pretty well. I've got to say, the airport has expanded a lot quicker than I expected. I think our security implementation is good enough. But we'll see what happens when we go commercial we've got lots of shops to build and cafeterias and a whole host of things that need to happen over here um, maybe a bit of a redesign is going to be required I don't know maybe this will become the center and uh, we'll expand out this way a bit more and uh, this could become the center of the terminal and all this will have to be redesigned it's difficult one thing, the only thing that um, this game is missing, I think, uh, let's just turn that off whilst we've got the chance, is um, planning tools. Oh no, look. Oh good. Well, where's this aeroplane going to go? We've got an issue now. Oh, thank goodness. Look, that one's going and he's coming in. Right, let's switch these over. Whoa, gosh. So what's this one? Okay. So that's commercial only. That's commercial only. That's commercial only. Oh, look, he's stuck. Okay, look, you can go there, dude. You can go there if you want. Commercial, commercial 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 we've got an issue now we've got problems look oh no this, this guy's moving a little bit maybe oh gosh okay we're Maybe if I open one of these up that you can get to easily, like these two. Okay, I think we've just broken the game. Because he landed expecting to be able to park, and then at that moment we, um, we blocked him. Oh, what's going to happen here?
we got a serious problem. Path is blocked. Yeah. Got some emails. <laughs> They're both spam. Oh no, we've got a problem. An employee can't reach his workplace. Don't know what the issue is there. Okay, well, it looks like things were going really well and now things are going really badly. I don't know what we can do about this, if anything at all. Oh, hang on. Um, no. Oh, bugger. Right, well, with that absolute disaster, I'm going to call that a day. And um, join me in the next episode when we'll hopefully figure out what the hell we're going to do. Till then, take care. Goodbye for now. <laughs>